Hey everybody, we've got some train wrecks to talk about, and I think you know what I'm talking about. 90 Day Fiancé's latest season, season 2, episode 3 of Before the 90 Days. This is a good one. Um, maybe I'm just thinking that it's so good because Happily Ever After was starting to get very boring, even though it has my favorite, favorite cast member of all time, and Fisa my favorite. Um, but yeah, there's only so many times you can hear Pedro, Badmouth, Family, Chantal, and uh, <laughs> and get annoyed by Paula. I don't know about you, but <laughs> um, I had enough of her very, very quickly. But yeah, so we've got some stuff to talk about here. Each of the couples in its own special way on this latest season just has so much good stuff. Um, okay, so Paul and Karini, probably the most boring couple, if you ask me. Um, every time I look at Paul, all I see is a big ball of his mother's hair. Do you remember that last season when he's going away to Brazil? <laughs> his mom's like, I want you to take a piece of me with you. She doesn't cut off a little lock of her hair and like put it in a locket or anything. No, she cleans out her hairbrush and hands him a ball of hair and you can literally see dandruff flakes in it. It's absolutely disgusting. But he's touched by this. He shoves it in one of his 37 bags. The guy's clearly never traveled before because my god. Um, goes about his business, whatever, taking a piece of his mom with her, with him, wherever he goes. Well, he seemed to think this was a pretty good idea because this season, when he I don't know, was it the end of last season? Anyway, at some point, they were in a cab anyway. Um, he says to Karini, I want you to always have a piece of me with you. So he starts ripping hairs out of his head and handing them to her. And she's just looking at him like, oh, okay, great. You know, Ooh. it's pretty weird. So yeah, I think uh, Paul is like a hairball, hairbrush. I don't know. That's all I see when I see him. Plus, he is a criminal, and he tried setting his own shit on fire so that he could get the insurance money. I don't know. I feel kind of bad for Karini. At least she's upfront about the fact that she wants, she wants the check, the, the, you know, the golden ticket. She wants to go to the state. And her family's pretty upfront about that, too. We need the American money. Paul's happy to do it, whatever. If he knows what's going on, he knows the score. You can't fault her. I know, it's kind of cute the way they communicate using phone apps, but whatever. I do find them very boring. Um, next most boring is actually one of the newer couples, and I'm just not sure how I feel about Rachel and John. Like, Rachel... I've seen a lot of people like on YouTube and stuff talk about how irresponsible it is of her to bring a baby overseas. I don't really think it's that bad. I mean, the kid, the kid just sits in a carrier. It's not like it has to lug around luggage. Um, I don't think it makes any difference to the baby. It's not like they're crammed in an airplane seat. I mean, you know. So that's fine, but... This John guy, like, is he really... Like, she seems to think he's some... First of all, that beard is not doing it for me, okay? And second of all, how short is he? His friends were ribbing him in the pub that time about what a shrimp he is. Does she know you're so small? How short is he? I would like to know. I don't know. But I'm not that impressed by him, I have to say. He's 34 years old, he still lives with his mother. Well, I don't know. You do what you gotta do, right? I don't know his circumstances. But I do know that he is a garbage sorter. That's his job. Now, I don't want to be a jerk, but your job is garbage. Literally. Like, I don't know. He can't smell very good when he comes home, right? I don't know. I guess that's Rachel's problem, but... So she goes all the way across the world to meet this guy, and um, she gets to the airport, Heathrow. Now, I've traveled to England a bunch of times, and I know driving there is not great. You take a train to Paddington, and... She didn't know this, she's never been, fair enough. But the thing is, he doesn't tell her this until she lands. Come on, garbage boy. <laughs> Give me a break. Like, he could have just told her this to begin with. Um, not a big deal. That train that goes from Heathrow to Paddington's really nice, actually. And you can buy, you know, upgrade to a 
a nicer class. I don't know if that's worth it. It's a pretty short trip. But, um, yeah, and I'm not sure that she would feel the need to do that. I feel bad for her, though. Like, man, did she look bad coming off that plane. Like, not saying, you know, she's ugly or whatever, but she looked haggard just through the ringer. And, like, he seems kind of like a superficial guy. And it kind of makes me wonder, like... She didn't put on any makeup, she's wearing a grungy sweatshirt and blah, blah, blah. I mean, I don't think that's, you know, like, but if you've never met before, although, have they met before? That is the question. There are internet rumors that there were, in fact, Instagram photos of them together from before they even applied to the show that have since been deleted. So, are they scamming TLC? Are they saying they've never met before? to get this um, show and, you know, make it look like it's some big thing. Have they met before? I don't know. There's some stuff that did happen with them that made me think, yeah, no, maybe they haven't. Because here's the main thing. He really didn't seem that impressed by her appearance. He made some comment like she looked different online. Well, so did you, shrimp? Like, I don't know. I didn't even think he looked good online, but that is not a good, I'm sorry, the beard is not doing it for me. Maybe that's personal preference. Clearly he has a bit of an ego. And how many desperate women are living in the town he lives in? Because they show a preview for one of the next couple weeks or something. How many people have you dated? Hundreds. Hundreds? How could that guy find 10 people to date him? I, whatever. He's got to get used to the baby. I don't know that he will. It's stress. It's stress. Things crying. He was asking, like, should I squeeze it? Get that kid away from him. Ah, oh, but it's okay. He can go downstairs and his mommy will make it all better. I'll make you a cup of tea. No problem. <sighs> so that's Rachel and John. I don't know. Darcy and Jesse. This couple is getting hard to watch. Like, I actually am starting to feel really bad for Darcy. She looks so good this season. She's lost a ton of weight. She got rid of the witchy black hair. That did not suit her. She looked terrible last season. And those spike heels coming off the plane, getting caught in the escalator. Oh my god, she looked like such an idiot. But yeah, she actually looks really good now. She's tacky as hell. But whatever. Jesse is so annoying. And so arrogant. And he's clearly only in this for the fame. Fame. Uh, I mean, yeah, I guess he's getting his day in the sun. He seems to be getting a lot of likes on Instagram, and I'm sure he's getting a bunch of personal training clients and stuff. I don't know. Apparently, all the couples each only get a thousand dollars per episode and that goes to the American member of the couple because I guess the other ones aren't legally cleared to work in the states so they can't earn income from the states but a thousand dollars an episode I was really surprised to hear that it was Luis the I guess ex of Molly who actually tweeted that or Instagrammed it or something he said like that so that answered a lot of questions actually but yeah, Darcy and Jessie, she has been through a lot to be with this guy. Like, remember his parents? The kookiest weirdos I've ever seen. Oh, he's on another level. You, you know, he's too good for you, basically. Like, that was pretty rude. And then just watching her and Jessie, it's like, she does need to stop drinking. I agree with Jessie on that one. She loses her mind when she drinks. She becomes so unreasonable. I think, though, she does that even when she's not drinking. She's just very emotional and, and he's very cold, so it kind of... There's no way they actually... Okay, there's no way he actually cares about her. There's no way. She's very smitten with him. She thinks he's some kind of Adonis. Well, I mean, he's in nice shape, but he's a jerk. Like, you can't find a guy who's in nice shape in the States. Give me a break. I don't know. That one honestly is kind of painful to watch, that couple, because I do feel really bad for her. Oh, and now she's introducing them 
him to her children, who look like they're 20, but apparently are only 11 and 12. And FYI, Darcy's children, no, you are not millennials. One of them made some kind of comment like, oh, I like Jesse, he's a millennial like me. If you're 11 or 12, you're not a millennial. You weren't even born at the turn of the millennium. So uh, that's just a pet peeve of mine. Anyhow, did she, I think she said when she was about to introduce him to, here comes daddy. Are you effing kidding me right now? What a delude annoyed. Like, seriously? I do feel bad for her, though. I do feel really bad for her if she thinks for a second that he's into her. Which she clearly does believe. I don't know. Tariq and Hazel. So, Tariq and Hazel met online. She's from the Philippines. She straight up says, into the camera, now, I don't know if she straight up said this to him because there's a, there's a lag, right, between it was when it was filmed and when the stuff actually happened. Did he just learn about this for the first time this week like we did? I don't know. But she straight up said to the camera, I'm a poor girl. I need somebody to get me out of this. This is my chance to go to the States. I think he thinks it's something different. I think he thinks there's like all kinds of true love and it's... And she's the Filipino Angelina Jolie. Okay, whatever. Um, that was a bit of a stretch, by the way. So, she annoys me because, hello, whatever, you want yourself a meal ticket. Hey, who am I to judge? Well, I'm gonna judge, but anyway. But then she turns around, he gets off the plane, and she's hiding behind her friends like some kind of timid three-year-old. Like, don't make me barf. And then the producers ask her, do you find him attractive? And she goes, he's chubby. So is he a meal ticket or are you using him for, like, pick one, man. Be shallow in one way. Not both. Like, that's just too much. You ain't all that girl. And, you know what, Tariq, he's not bad. I'm sure he could get a girlfriend in the States. I don't know what he's doing having to go halfway across the world. It wouldn't make for very good TV though if he didn't right so that's okay and can we talk for a second about Hazel getting ready with her cousin putting on that little cheap ass dress which whatever looked good she's she looks nice in it um, and her cousin what she said to her you look sexy bitch come on oh the producers must have loved that because that shit should have been edited out. They sounded like morons. Whatever. So I, I don't know. Then he takes her to this hotel, which is like the size of like a shoebox. And she's like, this is so luxurious and da da da. And that does really make me feel bad for her. Like she really is looking for her, way out of her situation. She's being industrious. She's using what she's got. But she lost me at calling him chubby. To be honest, he's not chubby. He's not skinny. He's just an average guy. She, ugh, whatever. Pick one, lady. Pick one way to be shallow. That brings me to Ricky and Melissa. Okay, I had a theory about Melissa. Because, spoiler alert, if you didn't watch the last episode, stop the video now. But, until last episode, nobody knew whether or not Melissa was real. Well, he waited two and a half hours in the restaurant, two and a half hours, and in she strolls, and yes, she's actually real. However, she's wearing braces. She wasn't wearing braces in her last photos. I actually had a theory about this. I had a theory that he was communicating with somebody who was using her hot cousin's photos to send to the guy and then when he shows up in Colombia she has to send in her hot cousin to pretend to be her so they can secure the money because he's been sending her money oh my goodness these Colombian women anyway like no offense just her and Paula um, 
So my theory was that she, she wasn't the one he was communicating with. And the fact that she has braces on her teeth and didn't in the photo suggests some kind of possible time lag there. Like, okay, she's sending really old photos and blah, blah, blah. Maybe she was, maybe she wasn't. But here's where my theory gets shot out of the water. And you might've seen this online. Apparently, somebody like zoomed in on a scene of Ricky's phone and could read their text messages. I think that's what it was from. Somehow we got screenshots of their text messages and somebody online translated it from Spanish and said what was on it. And it was basically Ricky saying, no, no, just meet as friends. Don't worry, just meet as friends. She says, I'm busy. He's like, just as friends, just meet me for... They do not have a relationship. They're not having a relationship, if this is correct, which I suspect it is. She's just some random chick he's been talking to now and then. She sent him some photos. He's sending her money. So her or the cousin that I'm theorizing about. Wow, right? <sighs> he goes all the way to Colombia. First of all, contacts TLC. Does this whole, like, about some chick who he's not even in any kind of romantic relationship with. He was clearly, clearly thinking with the wrong head. And, oh my goodness, Ricky is the kind of guy that goes to a restaurant and if the waitress is nice to him, he thinks she's flirting with him. He thinks she's into him. This is the kind of guy Ricky is. Because only a guy like that would think that a woman who looks like Melissa, at least in the photos, she doesn't look quite the same in real life. Someone who would think a woman like Melissa would date or be interested in a guy like him. Like you can't, she couldn't possibly find someone between here and Colombia or the States and Colombia. I mean, give me a break. Now this brings me to my very, very favorite couple on this new season, <laughs> Angela and Michael. Angela makes Danielle look like a supermodel. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Danielle and Mohammed from seasons past. Wow. Okay, this woman, Angela, she's actually been on the Maury show twice. Mori Povich. Actually three times, but one was just like a recap of one of the past visits. So she was on the show, Mori, twice, each time claiming that one of her daughter, remember her? Piranha Teeth? Uh, what is her name? Scotty. Claiming that um, one of Scotty's kids was not the, the the father of one of Scotty's kids was not the person she was claiming it to be. She did this twice. So on the one show, she's like, my daughter's lying, blah, 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 do, do, do. It's a different guy. And then of course they did the, the DNA test, which Maury is known for. And um, twice. Clearly this woman is looking for some fame. 20 minutes. She's getting it. And I'll say, the Maury appearance wasn't that long ago. It was like a two or three years ago. She looked way better then. Google it. Maury. Angela. 90 Day Fiance. Or I saw the video on Starcasm or In Touch. One of those. It's worth a look. She looks way better. And like, I'm not saying she's a supermodel because... But, um... Her hair wasn't that fried. Super bleached blonde. It was actually a nice kind of golden blonde and she looked like appropriately dressed. What the hell is she wearing when she gets off the plane in Africa to meet Michael? Somebody online pointed out her pit stains are in the shape of hearts. Oh, that's so romantic. Michael says to the camera, I think I can cope with this for two weeks. Another one blatantly, blatantly just out for the money. And she has no money. She had to like, she bought him an engagement ring in a pawn shop. And wasn't it, it was like 80 bucks. And she's like, oh, this is gonna hurt. This woman has no money, dude. 
you are barking up the wrong tree. But I guess a lot of these, I mean, how many of us have not been contacted by scammers in Africa? Like, no offense, but I've had at least three or four just be like, contact me. Like she said, she got a thing. How, hey, beautiful, how are you this morning? That's when you click block. But nope, she went for it. And he was delighted, I am sure. Because he's gonna get the money, or so he thinks. I don't know about that. She has no money. And she's disgusting. I'm sorry, I said it. She's gross. She looks like Donald Trump had sex with Jabba the Hutt and got a bleach blonde wig. That's what she looks like. Gross, 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 gross. And she's like sitting there grabbing at his crotch, like, oh my God, and this is funny. Can you imagine if he was a guy, or if she was a guy and whatever, and he's just, mm -mm. that wouldn't be funny. That'd be like creepy. And actually she is quite creepy, but he's already winning, right? Because she brought him the package. I love the package. His mentor, wannabe mentor, his hero, Donald Trump. She brought him a bobblehead and a Donald Trump 2016 t-shirt and a Make America Great Again hat and he was so excited and he's wearing it and oh my god, he thinks he's gonna come to the States and meet Donald Trump. He's totally thinking that. Well, I ain't gonna be the one to break that to him. But anyway, she is a train wreck. And man, her daughter, Piranha Teeth, looks even worse than her. Like, holy smokes, barf. Like, no offense, but Piranha Teeth, you know? Ugh. God. So yeah, I was kind of going through Twitter. Anyone else think John sounded disappointed when he said Rachel doesn't look like other girls he's dated? Something is off about him. Yeah, something is off. Oh, he doesn't look like... She doesn't look like other girls he's dated. He's dated hundreds. You're meaning to tell me you didn't have one that looked remotely like her? Dude. Ugh. <laughs> uh, at least Hazel is honest about wanting to harvest the American dollar. Things are gonna get a lot more stupider. That's family Chantal for anybody who doesn't know. Um, yeah. Harvest the American, harvest the American dollar. Chantal's mom has made that phrase, like, that ain't never going away, that's, that's here to stay. Oh, what else? Tariq's using Hazel because he has a fetish and she's using him for money. It all works out in the end, really. I, and that actually might be true, because I think he did say something, that he has something for Asian women. Like, I don't like it when people assume that everybody who goes out with an Asian woman is just after some fetish, but he did, he did say something like that, so. Somebody says, Hazel is the most honest person in 90 Day Fiancé history. No, that would be Anfisa, okay? And Anfisa is endearing and charming. Hazel is nothing. Hazel is boring AF. Okay, yeah. Michael says about Angela. She looks bigger and older than the pictures. But I am happy, he throws in bigger and older. I want to see these pictures. Have they shown them? Probably. Oh god, and his face after they kissed. My god, that was gross. That was seriously the grossest thing I've ever seen in 90 Day Fiancé history, though, is coming up next week because they gave us a, te a sample in the, the preview, didn't they? Michael's mother gives Angela something to eat that she doesn't like. She takes a bite of it doesn't spit it out, you know, discreetly like any normal person. No. She turns to Michael. Help me out. I need to get rid of this. Goes in for a kiss. They kiss. And she spits the food into his mouth. This woman is messed up. This woman is messed up, man. What else have you got? Yeah. Maury Pover show three times. That's right. Google that. Um, armpit sweat in the shape of a heart. Yeah. 
My thoughts on Melissa. Someone else has actually been talking to Ricky and using her pics. The pa person paid her to show up to keep the scam going. That's why she was so quiet. She doesn't know him. Agreed. That's That was my theory, too. Um, that, in conjunction with the, we'll only meet as friends. You know what? Both. I changed my previous opinion that it's one of the, it's both. It's gotta be both. This guy is pathetic, Ricky. Look in the mirror, dude. A woman like her would, no, just no. Paul is weird AF. His relationship with his mom is weird. His charges are weird. The way he packs is weird. It's all weird. What charges? I'm not sure what that means. Oh yeah. When they pulled up to the hotel, did y'all hear Angela say, oh, I hope my card works here or else I'll be so embarrassed. This chick went to Nigeria not knowing if her credit cards would work. Either she loves to live dangerously or is just straight up stupid. Yeah, I'm gonna go with stupid because if you recall in the last couple episodes, she was waiting literally day of to receive her visa or passport. Who books a trip without, like, day of? What a moron. My God. <laughs> <laughs> Some of these tweets are hilarious. Okay, yeah. Just leaving this here. What did I say? She looks like Donald Trump. She really, really does. I think maybe that's why Michael likes her. Except, I think he'd rather go to bed with Donald Trump, frankly. These thirsty-ass single parents make me want to smash my TV. Stop trying to con poor men, women, teenagers into playing house with your kids. It's dangerous and pathetic. Yeah, I kind of agree with that. Oh, Molly and Louise, and she's like, oh, you gotta take care of my dumbass kids. Actually, her one kid, the older one, actually made quite a bit of sense. She was a lot, um, had a lot more sense than her mother. But, uh, yeah. I don't know, man. The show, I'm so obsessed. It's it's really quite sad. It's really quite sad. Let's see any more interesting tweets here. She thinks Tariq is chubby. Hazel Hazel should be <laughs> Hazel should be thanking the star she wasn't meeting George or David. That's a good point. Oh my god. David. Penguin ass Batman motherfucker or whatever. That her best friend, whatever, that woman called him. No, the guy. David's best friend's wife's brother. Very accurate. Oh, God. George, I don't know. George is big, but he's not repulsive. David is repulsive. Woof. What kind of work does Darcy do because she stays in designer goods? Yeah, she um has a fashion label. I think it's called House of Eleven. But... It's not good, and I'm, I don't know. I would seriously wonder if she, if that stuff she's wearing is authentic. Like, I feel like she was buying shit outside the Port Authority, you know what I mean? These women have found men in America who would travel all the way around the world, sight unseen, for their hand in marriage. I can't even get a man to travel down the street to give me a hand carrying groceries. Yeah, that's a pity. Ugh. <laughs> Finding out Melissa wasn't a catfish. <laughs> yes. I think she still was, though. Let's be honest. Yeah, Darcy's saying, There are your stepkids to the kids. Like, wow. Wow. Judging by the previews, things are about to get a lot more stupider. <laughs> Money is very important to me, said Hazel. Oh my god. Uh, yeah. Okay, about uh, Rachel and John. I can't believe she has a man she just met who has a violent criminal history caring for her baby. He's already complaining about being stressed out. This is nuts. That's true, actually. That's true. <laughs> uh, I've never felt a bigger sense of community than drinking wine and live tweeting 90 Day Fiance every Sunday. Y'all, the real MVPs. 
I enjoy that too. Darcy's hairpiece has to go. Where is family Chantal when you need them? That's awesome. Her hairpiece is ridiculous. It's like four feet long. <laughs> so far, Michael has described Angela as his elder, masculine, and fat. He's such a sweet talker. And uh, I think in the preview for next week, he says, can't you put on more makeup to make yourself look better? Basically, I'm paraphrasing. But, um, <laughs> yeah, who remembers on last season when Paul was first trying to tell Karini about his past and he ran off into the woods and she was mugged? That was unbelievable. She was literally mugged at machete point. <laughs> like, she got attacked by machete, a person wielding machete. It was unreal. And he messed, like, he just fucks right off into the jungle. I wonder if he was wearing a condom on his penis to prevent. Brazilian dick slugs from jumping up in there. This guy, oh my god. She was so embarrassed when he tried to go swimming in that head-to-toe nuclear waste protection suit. Okay, 90% sure Paul has kept a woman in his basement without her consent for like three years. He does have that vibe. He does, yeah. Yeah. I know. 90 day fiance. Michael's friends. She is just like your grandma. Yeah. <laughs> Michael is not ready to be smothered in country fried titty. Well, he's taking one for the team. Oh my god. These people, man. Karini should ask Paul to take a battery of STD tests. Oh, never mind. She and we, no, ain't nobody sex in Paul. I can't believe it. Every time he sees her, he, he's making her take another pregnancy test. Like, oh my God. Uh, 90 Day Fiance, the show is TV reality gold. Agreed. Tariq needs to hire family Chantal's private investigator after Hazel's comments on money and coming to America. Yeah, or maybe he knows now that he's watched the show. <laughs> Somebody said of Angela, this is what I imagine Honey Boo Boo will be like as an adult. Yeah, well, Honey Boo Boo's mom looks a lot like, well, I think she's lost a bunch of weight, hasn't she? But that's like, take Honey Boo Boo's mom, add about 50 pounds, put her into some kind of dehydrator, keeping her fat, but just wrinkling her skin. That makes no sense. But you know what I mean? You're getting close to Angela with heart-shaped armpit sweat. Ah. Uh. Angela, when are you going to tell Michael his mentor doesn't want him in America? I feel cheated, someone said. I want to see the text messages these people exchanged. They made them think that they're so in love with these people. They have zero chemistry in person. That's true. And I really want to see Ricky's and Melissa's texts to see them. Anyway, my phone's telling me my file is too big so I'm gonna stop now I hope you listened to that and enjoyed it good night <laughs>